Hi, my name is Trail and I'm a massage therapist and a personal trainer. Hi, my name is Jitain and I'm the yoga teacher. Hi, I'm Kim and I teach Pilates. Okay, today we're going to give uh, our perspective based on what we've learned um, on breathing. Okay, the most basic fundamental movement. Okay, and we're going to be doing a couple of video clips every week going through different parts of the body and again coming from a Pilates, yoga and strength perspective. Today we're going to deal with breathing. Okay, so when someone comes in and with a sore neck, shoulders, lower back, okay, the first thing very often that we look at is how they breathe. Okay, and today I'll show you how to identify a chest breather or a stress breather. So quite simply, I would not tell people what I was looking for. So Kim, can you close your eyes please? Okay. And I just ask them to take a deep breath in and breathe out. And what I'm looking for is does she initiate from her chest or from her belly? A chest breather will go straight up into the chest. Okay. Which is fine if you're getting chased by a lion or you owe someone money or you're going through a bad divorce. Yeah, you go into sympathetic tone, you need more oxygen, you use all these muscles up here. If you're just standing in front of me in my therapy room, breathing normally, deeply, okay, it's not stressful. So what I'm really looking for is diaphragmatic breathing, belly, and then of course you use your chest, okay, but belly first. So quite simply guys, if someone's a chest breather, they bypass the diaphragm, okay, and they go straight into their stress breathing muscles. Okay, so how do we address that from a yoga perspective? Okay, so in the yoga, as you know, the, there's a state we call pranayama. And the pranayama, the first breathing is full yogi breathing. So if you see a kid, when the kid actually breath, he or she always uses our abdomen. But as we grow up, we actually skip that part. We only, only use our chest. So it's always good to use your navel, your abdomen with each breathing. And it's one of the most relaxing breathing as well. As you, as you know that in yoga and Ayurveda we say, right nostril, sun, solar energy, it's very fire, very energy, left is moon, very calm and cooling. So with this actual breathing, we actually can relax our body, we actually can relax our solar and lunar energy in our body. So what you need to do on this, it can be on the sitting position, it can be on the standing position, keeping your back straight, shoulder relaxed. And then if you want, you can also place your palm on your navel point to feel. And with the inhale, start from your navel point. Then slowly you're going up, chest up. And a little bit sometimes the shoulder will go a little bit back, but do not force, it will go by itself. And with the exhale, shoulder will come and relax, chest, and then your navel point in. So it's like... So that's the way you can actually relax your body, relax your mind, and you can keep doing this breathing like 24 hours. Actually, we have to do this breathing all the time. Yeah. And then Kim will show you on the Pilates perspective. So with Pilates, the same idea is happening um, with any kind of postural problems that people have, um, back pain, neck tension, upper cross syndrome. Um, really, breath is so important because the diaphragm is attaching to all these areas in the body. And so we're going to do an exercise with Jit in here um, to get into back breathing. So, so you'll um, line your back with your knees bent and your, your feet hip width distance apart. You'll lift the hips up and put any kind of prop under your pelvis. So this is under your pelvis, it's not under your lower back, it's on your sacrum. So it's very low. And this is a really restorative place for the body to be. And with gravity coming down on the body this way, it really helps the person feel the back of the body more. So they want to transfer the breath more into their back diaphragm, even close to the kidneys and the adrenal you know, glands. So he's just going to think of when you breathe, allowing the back to move. And it's nice to have your hand there to give the person a little bit of support and give them something to it's a hard place to feel, it's a very subtle feeling, so having um, someone's touch is helpful. Yeah, that's nice. 
And that way, really, he's moving his diaphragm in a more 3D way. So he's still moving the chest and the belly, but the breath is moving throughout his torso more evenly. Yeah, that was nice. Okay. And the last thing we'll do, uh, what I've been taught, is crocodile breathing, which actually comes from yoga. Okay, so you get someone to lie on their belly, okay, and you ask them to breathe into their belly, because if they do that, they get pushed back from the floor, from the bench, and you will see my lower back opening up. If they chest breathe, they don't open up. Okay, so this is a very easy way to get people to become belly breathers. Okay, and it's reciprocal. When you make a bicep, your tricep relaxes. So when you activate your diaphragm, a lot of these muscles up here which are tired and stressed and full of trigger points, reciprocally relax. Okay, so guys, we'll be posting more videos.